so this is the main uh, concern idiopathic interstitial pneumonias like idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis so idiopathic interstitial pneumonias are classified based on the presentation and patterns so it can be chronic fibrosing type which contains idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or idiopathic non specific interstitial pneumonia it may be smoking related which contains rbild and tip or it may be acute and subacute which contains cryptogenic organizing pneumonia and acute interstitial pneumonia so these three are major classifications of ilds chronic fibrosis smoking related and acute subacute other than that uh, there may be some rare subtypes which are known as lymphoid interstitial pneumonia and pleuro parenchymal fibroelastosis so what we'll see in these patterns is in ipf we'll see uip pattern in nsip we see other patterns so these patterns we'll be discussing later on so talking about idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis as we have previously discussed it is the most important subtype of ild and it is important to know whether the patient is having ipf or anything else because ipf is having worse prognosis of all the ilds so ipf is a specific form of chronic progressive fibrosing interstitial pneumonia of unknown cause it causes still not known it occurs primarily in older adults usually more than 60 years or 50 years it is limited to the lungs and is defined by the histological or radiological pattern of uip so what is uip we'll be discussing so uip is a typical pattern which signifies uh, signifies the presence of uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis so what contains uip is subpleural and basal predominant distribution that is often heterogeneous honeycombing with or without peripheral tractional bronchiectasis or bronchiectasis so we'll be discussing it. don't worry about these terms so this is the hrct pattern of uip what we have to know is subpleural and basal predominant distribution that is heterogeneous honeycombing with or without tractional bronchitis we can see there is honeycomb in this which is subpleural and basal with or without tractional bronchitis so if this pattern is there it is known as uip pattern so we can see here there is honeycomb stacked cyst on the basis of lung two or three layers with septal thickening and tractional bronchitis again multiple different cities we can see here there is honeycomb which is subpleural location basal subpleural honeycomb with or without tractional bronchitis we can see honeycomb clearly here with or without tractional bronchitis and septal thickening so this is known as uip pattern again one different pattern is probable uip so what is probable uip when you have all other things like tractional bronchitis or septal thickening but you do not have honeycomb it is known as probable uip so probable uip is subpleural basal predominant distribution often heterogeneous reticular pattern with peripheral tractional bronchitis or bronchiectasis and may have mild ground glass but it does not have a uh, uh, honeycombing so we can see there is septal thickening there is bronchiolectasis means tractional bronchiectasis dilatation of airway but it does not have honeycomb typical honeycombing is not there so this is probably uip pattern and third is indeterminate for uip means it does not have honeycomb and it does not have other things it may have subpleural basal predominant subtle reticulation may have mild ggos or ct features and or distribution lung fibrosis that do not suggest any specific etiology that is truly indeterminate so why to classify the ct according to uip probable uip or indeterminate uip next is the question if the patient is having uip pattern that is presence of basal honeycomb septal thickening with or without traction bronchitis he may be having ipf but if patient is not having definite uip pattern he may he is having probable uip that is he does not have honeycomb he may be ipf or he may not be ipf then we have to do biopsy of the patient so in probable uip indeterminate for uip or alternative diagnosis if there is clinical suspicion we have to do lung biopsy but in definite uip pattern if this pattern is there biopsy is not needed we have to uh, label it patient as ipf provided other diagnosis of uip are ruled out okay so uh, alternative diagnosis that make diagnosis of uh, uip unlikely is presence of cyst so if there are cyst there is marked mosaic attenuation mosaic attenuation means presence of different densities 
like here we can see more dark areas here we can see lighter areas so if there is mosaic attenuation it is unlikely to be ipf if there is predominant ground glass it is unlikely to be ipf if there is present uh, profuse nodules or consolidation it is unlikely to be ipf so ipf pattern is this pattern which is typical of subdural basal honeycomb with septal thickening with or without tractional bronchitis if there are other patterns it is unlikely to be ipf and if you are suspecting ipf then better do lung biopsy and then proceed